Hey guys, this is Stuart from Archer's Insight. Coming to you uh, today with a review on the UltraView slash knock-on PSC bow grip. Um, obviously, I've posted a couple videos on the PSC Omen and uh, really liking the bow itself and just kind of playing with different things. I'm a, you know, I'm a gearhead, so I've always got to try the latest and greatest and you know, I love giving feedback to, to everybody here. Hopefully you find that useful. Uh, which reminds me, like and subscribe, and I'll keep doing these things. Um, anyway, uh, you will notice though the the PSC is not alone. I've got the Matthews, that's the V3X33, and then over there behind it is the little brother, the 29. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see a review of any of the Matthews bows. My thoughts, I've got both of them. I'd be happy to share a comparison on that to anybody that you know is, is uh, wanting to know anything. And uh, shoot me a comment down below if you'd like to see that, and I'd be happy to put together a video for for all of you without further ado let's go to the ultra view um, grip so the ultra view grip is uh, in the package basically you get this this guy it's a little little basically a little piece of plastic that is like a, about a third of a grip um, but nevertheless you get that you get two sets of screws um, two of the screws which are for aluminum bows most of um, the, the, the bows that are out on the market, uh, PSC bows that are out on the market will, will fit this grip. I think if you go back even a couple years, few years, those will also retrofit. It's just where the, basically the two screws are right in the center of the, uh, the grip riser. Um, the silver set of screws is for aluminum bows and then in the package is carbon, uh, carbon or bows for, screws for carbon bows, the levitate specifically. Um, so that, that's what you get in there. Uh, kind of describing the, the grip itself, it's hard plastic, so it's not very soft. Um, nevertheless, on the back of it, you got some uh, knock-on, you know, gnarling, uh, I guess you could say, which helps with uh, slippage. The shape of, the, of the, the grip itself is, again, it kind of stops up towards the thumb area, and it adds a few degrees of angle to the overall um, riser grip that, that you naturally have. And some of the benefits of this is going to put your your uh, your hand into a more kind of repeatable high risk position, uh, rather than if you shoot off the riser. Some people shoot with kind of a lower part of the palm, um, but it's going to really push your hand up into the webbing um, between your thumb and index finger. It's going to add a little bit of width also on it, and there's some contouring, which also I find personally forces my hand into a, a really nice natural position there. Uh, but those are a couple of the design benefits that, that uh, you know, really they were going for here. Um, you know, nothing against the, the uh, stock PSC grip, but it is, you know, again, it's kind of your standard fat wide um, rubberish grip, uh, which for me and, and for most people can, or for a lot of people, I should say, not most, it, it can tend to, you know, make you force, uh, force kind of either right or left in terms of torque. I find, you know, I'm a riser guy on both of those Matthews. I've got side plates. I find a skinnier riser with a flat back on it really to, to suit my shooting style quite well. Uh, so this adds a little bit of, um, I guess, additional advantage because you have a higher angle forcing your hand to a repeatable position and you've got some gnarling on the back. So if you shoot off the riser, in the summertime or if your hand's sweaty, uh, it, certainly it can slip and those types of things. I know a lot of people uh, will add grip tape or kind of cloth athletic tape or something on a grip to avoid that. Um, but uh, nonetheless, that's, that's essentially what it's doing. Um, is it worth it? I'll tell you my thoughts. So my thoughts on the grip are a couple things. So my recommendation for anybody that's kind of questioning their grip or want to try a different grip. I do a couple steps first before I jump and spend $50 on, a, on, on this plastic uh, grip. First thing is I would take the stock grip off. If you haven't already done that, it's easy to do. A couple screws, pull it off and you're bam, you're shooting off the riser. Try that first. Um, you know, take a couple days to, to spend with the riser uh, on its own. If you find that it's not quite to your liking, the next thing I would probably do is go buy some athletic tape or you know some baseball bat you know grip tape or tennis tape. I mean they do have uh, archery specific tape out there, but it's not going to cost you very much to at least give that a try. So that's what the next thing that I would try to see if I could find a very comfortable position. If that still doesn't work, 
or you're still not happy with your grip, I'd definitely say give it a try. Um, in my opinion, what I did notice is, again, the angle of the grip forced you know, the webbing of my hand to, to really sit nicely uh, in the same repeatable place. At full draw, I did notice that I was you know, torquing less. Again, it could have been a placebo effect, I'm not sure, but it, it's something I didn't really have to think about. Um, and I noticed that really at the longer uh, yardages. So, you know, 20, 30, 40 yards, um, I don't notice that much of a difference in terms of changes to, to little tweaks that I do, um, very minimal. So I think where you start to see these things show up is at longer ranges. So 60, 70 yards is extremely impressed with my uh, shot grouping. And I could only say that it was really probably a consi more consistent grip. Um, you know coming from this so it could be worth it uh but again i would i would recommend you know trying a few of those state uh, steps uh before you before you drop this i think really the only downside of this is probably the price um again i don't know what it costs to make it but i can't imagine it being even 25 dollars but uh i guess what you get from the ultra view guys is really cool design collaboration with uh, john dudley who's one of the best out there um you know that said uh, give it a shot for me again i'm a, I'm a gearhead as i said before i like to try all the latest and greatest and then you know give that information back to all of you which costs you nothing to do so with that said if you like my content go ahead and hit like subscribe so you, you know when there's more shoot me a comment below let me know if you want to hear about my view of the v3 uh, x 33 and 29 that i have behind me and for more day-to-day -day stuff go follow me on instagram so i'm uh, s.g.holmes there you'll find you know i update that a lot more regularly than i do youtube um, simply it's just quick i love photography so you'll find some more stuff like that lastly you'll see that i'm uh, wearing a corbin's archery hat uh, great group of guys i don't live in texas um, or anything like that but i've done some uh, i've purchased some things through them and i was really uh, impressed with uh, their level of service, super friendly, super responsive, also on Instagram, you know, just messaging. Um, go check them out. I think they're a great shop amongst many others that are out there. Um, and they also seem to be carrying a lot of the UltraView stuff, which is kind of why I wanted to, to mention them in this video. Again, I'm not affiliated with them. Uh, I paid for the hat. I paid for the binoculars that I, that I got from them. Um, but uh, anyway, just thought they were a cool shop and thought I'd give them a shout out. Again, um, Thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time.